then, as you know, I've been playing organ recently and using headphones is not the ideal way to enjoy the sound of Hammond organ, which usually is accompanied by a massive wooden Leslie speaker with a huge 15 inch woofer and rotating horns that throws the air all around the room. You get a fantastic woody thunk when you're walking your left hand bass or tapping the pedals, which you don't get on headphones. So I started researching a suitable keyboard amplification system for the Viscount Legend. See my earlier video and today I'm going to reveal what I bought and we'll test it out for the first time and review it. So let's unbox the box. Rather surprisingly, nearly all keyboard amps are mono. This is rather scandalous because nearly all keyboards are stereo. Why are the manufacturers subjecting us to this? It's bordering on insulting to use such low-fi mono keyboard amps in this day and age. Mono is unsuitable for a clone wheel organ, which has a rotary speaker emulation that has to be run in stereo. Stereo is also essential if you're playing a piano sound and highly desirable to get the best out of your synths. Now, most of you already know this and many of my viewers will be using a pair of active powered PA loudspeakers or maybe studio monitors, but I decided to go for a powerful stereo amplifier and a pair of passive PA loudspeakers. I'll explain the reasons why during the course of this video. Price was certainly a factor and this is just for home use, so I don't need to spend more money than necessary on a system that would be massively overkill for a small room. It doesn't need to be super high-end or rugged, built for a life on the road. When I asked for advice on some forums, people were seriously recommending 2000 watt systems costing thousands of dollars. Can you believe that? It's crazy. You know me though, let's keep it good enough and affordable. Okay, I'm cheap. It actually ended up with me buying one of the very cheapest PA systems on the market from the biggest music store here in Europe called Toman. I'm going to give their own brands a chance today, albeit with some trepidation. I'm skeptical about the quality because they are so cheap, but I did read the reviews and discovered that people were very happy with these and rate them highly. So I thought I'd give it a chance. Let's not get snobbish about brand recognition. The speakers I bought have 12 inch woofers. Playing bass lines on organ pushes a lot of bottom end, so I was wary of smaller cabs. Although I wanted something compact as well, so this is a bit of a trade off. These are monitor style cabinets, so you can chuck them on the floor and tilt them upwards, no stands needed. I did also consider a 2.1 system with the sub and satellites, but I think you maybe need a pair of big woofers for the rotary simulation to work at its best. I also opted for Toman's own brand of amplifier. Again, these are remarkably cheap, but got great reviews. We'll see for ourselves how it works out. This particular amplifier is rated at about 45 watts RMS into 8 ohms, which is what these speakers are. And the speakers should be able to handle that comfortably with headroom to spare, but I probably never will push them anywhere close to the limits. The cost then was about $80 for each speaker and $140 for the amp. That's in US currency and would even be less without the really high sales tax we pay here in Sweden. So call it about 300 bucks in total and I challenge you to find a better stereo keyboard amp system for this kind of money. I'd love to hear from you in the comments as always. The only real drawback for me is that they do take up quite a bit of space, a bit more than I was expecting, either to the side of the stand or underneath, which doesn't leave much space for your legs. This is a pretty small room I'm in here. I've been experimenting, and at the end of the video, I'll play for you a bonus segment showing an interesting placement that works really well for clone wheel organs. Oh, and unfortunately, 
we had a little accident right after I switched off the camera, so I'll share that incident with you as well. Obviously, it's not possible for you to really hear what it sounds like for me here in the room. So you're just hearing the sound of the camera mics, which is not really all that great, but at least it's stereo. But it would sound very much better if you were here with me. There is absolutely no buzzing or vibrations from the cabinets, which I really like. This is something I was worried about, although I did hear some buzzing when I was playing B flat. But it turns out it's the metal chassis of the organ vibrating. So not much I can do about that other than putting a flower pot on it or something to stop it vibrating. So the organ is sounding marvellous, but let's try it with something that does require more high fidelity. So we'll hook it up to the Nautilus and try some piano, synth and drum beats. incredibly impressed with these loudspeakers. The build quality is outstanding at any price really. It's got this nice carpeted finish. The wood feels very substantial and solid. You've got nice high quality Speakon connectors here as well. A lot of keyboard players are going for powered loudspeakers and that's something I considered for a long time as well. The only thing is with powered loudspeakers, that's when the amplifier is built into the speaker itself. They're often bi-amped, incredibly uh, powerful, really nice speakers. But I've had them before and they always have like a plastic enclosure. And I found that when you're pushing low bass notes on piano, roads or organ, what can happen, I've had this happen to me before on some speakers I've owned, is that you get a bit of a vibration, a really unpleasant buzzing noise that's just super annoying when you press certain notes or hit certain frequencies. And I actually have in the past replaced plastic speakers for wooden ones like these and had much better experience. There is nothing on here that will vibrate in the same way that a plastic speaker enclosure will. So that's why I decided to go for passive loudspeakers because then it's uh, more commonly available to have them built in wood. And I did consider also buying studio monitors as well, but the thing is with those, they don't move as much air. They're not in this, but you won't find any with 12 inch woofers at a reasonable price. You need to power them both. And you also need to put them on stands for best effect. They're not normally as rugged as a pair of loudspeakers like this that are built to withstand a few knocks. So I wouldn't want to chuck a pair of studio monitors on the floor where my feet are. But these, no problem at all. You can even rest your feet on them if that's something that you like to do. As for this amplifier, I'm incredibly impressed with that as well. The build quality is outstanding. It's all metal as you'd expect, but the feeling of the knobs, the control, the volume knobs on the front for left and right channels, absolutely fantastic. Feels really high quality. The switch gear, 
the connections on the back and it weighs a substantial amount. A couple of nice features about this particular amplifier then. You can sort of bury it away at the back of your studio and it will switch itself off when it's not detecting that there's any signal being passed through it. And then when you play something on the keyboard again, it will wake back up to life. So that's really nice. You never have to bother switching it on and off. There's one more advantage of this particular amplifier and something that you should keep in mind yourself if you're buying something for a similar application. This one does not have a cooling fan built in. It's purely using convection cooling, which is perfectly silent. There's no noise at all. I uh, looked at some other amplifiers but discounted them because they had whirring, noisy fans. That's not something I wanna hear when I'm playing keyboards and synths. One speaker is the perfect height for a comfortable piano stool, and it vibrates very pleasantly under my buttocks when playing. <laughs> I've forgotten how to play it! As you can tell then, I'm incredibly satisfied with this purchase. I'm amazed what you can get for $300 these days. The sound of these is fantastic, the amplifier delivers more than enough power with tons of bass. This thing shakes the room if you want it to. Let me know in the comments if you think you have a better alternative to this for a stereo keyboard amplification system at this kind of price. And remember this would also double as a great PA when you combine it with a mixer, some microphones, in a small venue you could run guitar, keys and vocals through this thing and it would sound really good. Also, a really nice system for having parties at home. Not that I do that, but you could if you wanted to. I can't wait to hear your thoughts in the comments. Thank you so much for watching this video. A special thanks to all my patrons and channel members. I'll see you again next time. Cheerio. I thought I'd share with you this speaker configuration that I've been experimenting with. Something maybe you wanna try yourself. So a real Hammond organ has a Leslie speaker position to the side of it, either to the left or to the right. So what I've done is stacked my two speakers up here and to get the right stereo effect when the rotary simulation is going here, I've got the top cab positioned so it's shooting towards the wall and sending the sound scattering across the room. And on the bottom we have a speaker facing outwards. So I'm still getting some stereo separation but with them stacked up here just like a real organ speaker cabinet. The amplifier is hidden behind the curtains and yes, we had a bit of a mishap yesterday, immediately after I switched off the cameras, after the unboxing and presentation. I had it balanced on top of one of the cabs, resting on the handle a little bit awkwardly, and it slid off, smashed into the ground, just from this height, but it made a heck of a bang, and look, oh, it's really messed up the front panel. So anyway, it does does still work, which is testament to the build quality of this, but that just shows how heavy it is. The weight of the coils and transformers and stuff inside was enough to really mangle up the front panel. Really gutted about that, just after playing it for half an hour. Oh well. Why is it that we keyboard players put our instruments at the edge of the room facing outwards so that when we're playing, we're staring at a wall one or two feet away, like some kind of punishment for a disobedient child. It's kind of strange, isn't it? And I can't think of any other instrument players that do that.